every day this little dog tries to attack that bike. Grab the a buffer and he's gonna buff it now and we're gonna match to that color right there. We just didn't want to risk cracking the gel coat trying to take this out of the mold. Perfect! Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So yesterday I went to the city to buy materials, so I've been away nearly two days. Two things have happened. One, uh, Zach had to leave. He got called back to work earlier than expected, so he's going to spend a week spearfishing in Sandblast before he has to go back to work on a super yacht in Alaska. The other thing that happened is this guy got <laughs> stung by a lionfish. So lionfish are an invasive species. They don't belong here in the Caribbean Sea and somehow they made it over here and they are eating all of the baby native fish to the ecosystems in the Caribbean so everyone's encouraged to shoot them the only problem with doing that is they have poisonous spines on their back and if you get stung by one of them uh, you can be in severe pain and I've heard of many different variations of how people react to that so Tom got stung yesterday and his finger, oh, you tell it. Yeah, so it was an amateur move. I spared, I went down, spared the lionfish, came up to the boat, the fish was on the spear end, and I flung it round, but then the fish just slid down the, the spear and straight <laughs> onto my finger. That's what we're dealing with. Oh, shit. Look at the size of that blister. <laughs> it was swollen to about here. But I put my hand in hot water. You're meant to put it in hot water straight away, like scorching hot to the point where it's not burning, but as hot as you can handle. And I did that for two hours, and you're meant to do that because it, it's the protein and the poison. Apparently, it breaks down the protein and it stops it from spreading. So I think I got it really quite quick because it only really made it to my hand. But I've heard stories of it going up arms and and yeah, even infections making its way up into your towards your armpit. So so I'm pricking it. So yeah, we're gonna pop it. That's the point of this <laughs> this little story. We're popping it. Yeah. There we go. Ah. Drippage. Well, here we go. Just in the other on the side. On the other side. Right? Good, in and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's why the string is good. It's like following the string. So we're in the tropics here, we're in Panama, it's not exactly the most sterile environment to be living in. Um, so one of the main things he's going to have to look out for is to not get an infection in there. So, we've just uh, taped it down, wiped it with acetone, now we're ready to start the wax on, wax off process. We're going to do this maybe five or six times, rub the wax on. Not, we don't want it to pile up inside the little indentations, we're just putting a thin film of wax on it and then we're, we're letting that sort of dry a little bit and then we'll wipe it off. Okay, so now it's time to take the wax off. And then just to be double sure, we're going to do two layers of PVA. Same deal, but you don't wipe that stuff off, you just put it on real, real thin, and then the mold will be ready to be used. Kind of nerve wracking at times. If uh, the piece that we put in here does rip a little bit of gel coat out, out of the center here, the whole mold is ruined and we're not going to be able to get the pieces that we need. So last night we went to a birthday party in, uh, at the Anchorage and we took two dinghies. I drove the big one and Tom was driving the little one, the old one. 
and uh, he hit something and the cowling popped off the dinghy and it sank. So this morning we're gonna go out there and see if we can find it. Well, the guys are. I have to go to Panama Marina to buy some more materials, but the guys are gonna jump in and see if they can locate the cowling. Maybe maybe you hit the those That's moorings. Alright boys, good luck. <laughs> So where's the cowling? <laughs> and the, the ocean has, has claimed it. Even when you did go down there, you couldn't see nothing. Uh, Could you get the, to the bottom? It's just nice. It's just a cloud at one moment. You are like going into a cloud. Well, we're down to cowling. Who's going to buy that thing now? So we're going to get ready for the first coat, which is this color match gel coat. We had the uh, local expert, Julio, come and match this. So when you're doing boat work, or any work for that matter, I think it's a hey, conehead. What's going on? I think it's important to know your limitations. And for me, one of those limitations is color matching gel coat. Um, I'm just not good enough to, to uh, be able to do it for this transom extension here. I've tried it before and what I thought was a perfect color match turned out to be quite different. To what I thought so I'm not even gonna try so I'm, I'm uh, employing the services of uh, the local expert his name's Julio he does all the boats around here um, he's on his way over we've just sanded a spot with 2000 grit uh, but he's just gone and grabbed a, a buffer and he's gonna buff it now and we're gonna match to that color right there so hopefully he gets it right and he nails it because we're gonna use this color for the um, transom extension for the hard top for everything we're just gonna I've got five gallons of it so the gel coat that you buy from the store is pure white and uh, most boats aren't pure white <laughs> every day this little dog tries to attack that bike every day um, what was I saying ah most boats aren't pure white so there's got they've got pigments in it so I've bought some black some yellow and some mustard personas para ver esto. original why do you, what do you mean you need the lift? Well, we've got a broken bulkhead to deal with too. Are you, what kind of boat you got? It's a Lagoon 410. Oh, really? Not nearly as bad as what you had to go through, but... Uh, you got a broken bulkhead? Yeah. Ah, shit. Mediterranean did it, you think. Yeah? Yeah. Shit, that's no good. Nice to meet you. I find it so difficult because you just mix in the tiniest amount of pigments and it just changes the color completely. Here he goes with some black. This is really going to darken it up. There's a little bit of glare, so it must be hard. He's picking up a bit of Dave's boat, a bit of the gravel down there, so it's, it's a real art to this. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Dinner? Sí, sí. So he's doing three things. He's mixing, um, he's comparing what he's mixed in the small bucket. Bueno. He's comparing what he's mixing in the small bucket with what he's got in the original big bucket and comparing them to what's on the boat. So there's 
A lot going on right now. It looks done to me, but he's still going. I asked him why he's doing it in the small one and not just straight in the big one. He's just seeing what sort of ratio of pigments he's, he's using on the little one, because he doesn't want to just go straight to the big one and potentially mess up a whole five gallon pail of gel coat. He put it on the, uh, on the hull, and I looked away for a second and looked back and I couldn't even see where it was. So it must be pretty good. All right, he says he's got it. He's uh, <laughs> he says he's um, got the color color match in the little bucket. How Two. Where's it eh? Where's all the fish? On the sea. Not one. Nah, this is a big one in the dinghy, but we need an extra hand to carry it. I think it's a dolphin. This is the walk of shame right here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. You better get back out there. It's, it's still light. Okay. I'm gonna heal. Ah, now I get it. He's kept most of the stuff in the little bucket. And he's just gonna keep comparing the big bucket to the little bucket now. And then double checking it with the hull. Must be easier to compare gel coat to gel coat than compare gel coat to the hull. Okay, we're gonna continue tomorrow. Um, we've just run out of light. He just doesn't feel comfortable carrying on. This can go on hold and we'll continue tomorrow. Hasta mañana. All right, we're back here with Julio. Listo? Listo. He just chucked a bit more uh, yellow in there. Now he's going for the blue, oh, the brown, now the black. When he puts the original color match stuff and just drips it into the pail of gel coat, you can really see the color difference between the uh, new stuff and old stuff. So um, I guess that's a really good way to, to see the um, color difference. Nice little trick there for you. He's got those two matched perfectly. You cannot tell the difference. So as long as the first batch in his little bucket is the right match, then we are in business. Perfecto. Perfecto. We've just tried it on another spot. Um, we're up near the flybridge. We just put put a uh, little dollop of gel coat there. Can you guys see a difference? I sure as hell am not. Which means we can use this gel coat for all of the little spot repairs we have to do around the boat. Like that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. So this is the gel coat that we have to use from now on. Gotta have to give it a good mix up. It's been sitting for a while inside. We've had it inside where there's aircon, so just to keep it good. Here we go. Check out to PB8. Now we're rolling. Well, we'll give this a second just to, just to dry. And then we will roll a thick layer of gel coat. Okay, now we're going to do a second coat of gel coat. Okay, so the second layer of gel coat is, is tacky. You can touch it. It hasn't fully cured, but it's... Uh, you are able to touch it without it coming off on your finger. So that means uh, when we put this um, layer of thickened gel coat on there, we will have a chemical reaction between the filler and the gel coat. Let's go.
Okay, the filler is kicked nicely. It's, all that filler did was just fill all the little, um, the rest of the little squares, gave us a nice flat surface to glass on, which we're gonna do now. Polyester resin, one layer of chop mat, just to give it some rigidity so that we can glue this thing onto the boat. There we go, we made a last minute decision to put two layers of glass on there. We just didn't want to risk cracking the gel coat trying to take this out of the mold. So, we'll let this cure, come back in the morning and we'll try peel it up. Fingers crossed, everything goes smoothly. Good morning everyone. Mold is cured. Woke up super early this morning and just became slightly worried about this whole thing because if this mold, we made this mold a long time ago because my friend Elia was selling the boat and we had to do it that day or basically never. And my boat doesn't have a piece of non-skid on it big enough to do this in one piece. So his Nordatec 46 could. But, so this mold has been sitting around for a few months now. So I'm hoping, really hoping that when this comes out, the mold stays together in one piece. Because if it doesn't, we kind of have a serious problem. So it's quite a big moment. I'm quite anxious about this. And even if this one is successful, we still have to do another one for the other side. Fingers crossed. I bought this little wedge here just to make life a bit easier. I'm nervous. Come on. I'm joking. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh. Perfect. Fuck yes. Look at that thing. Perfect! Mm -hmm. Nice one, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect! Guys, I'm so stoked about this. Off the boat that we took the mold, there was a slight scratch in the non-skid hair, so that has transferred into our piece. But again, as soon as you come back a couple of feet, you can't see it. So that is an Excellent job. So I feel like we're on a bit of a winning streak here. So we're just going to take the edges, throw some wax and PVA on it and just get the other side done again today. And then we got both our non-skid pieces done, ready to be cut to shape and glued in place. Yes. And a quick change of plans. We don't have enough um, mold release. We've got some more coming tomorrow, the uh, wax. So <clears throat> I'm going to start working on the template that we need to make in order to cut the non-skid to shape. Mm -hmm. 